What? They did the mash. They did the monster mash. The monster mash. That's right. There is another Monster Mash movie. And why wouldn't there be? For every holiday song in existence, it feels like there's at least one movie made of it. Hell, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer has two movies. So considering that Monster Mash is the only Halloween song anyone actually knows that isn't by Michael Jackson or from The Nightmare Before Christmas, it makes sense that it would be the subject of two movies. What gets me, though, is that this movie was somehow made first! The animated Monster Mash that I reviewed six years ago was made in 2000. This one was made in 1995. And not only that, but according to IMDb, the 2000 Monster Mash it was a remake of this one. Why remake a movie that's only five years old? Then again, IMDb is basically a glorified Wikipedia, so someone could have easily pulled this fact out of their ass. You may remember my review of the animated Monster Mash, but if you don't, let's take a look. Greetings, everybody. This is Count Happy Spaceman, a special Halloween review. Oh hey, my acting was just as bad back then as it is now. Is a time of fright, great fear, and spooks. Is that Megalomania by Muse playing in the background? Uh, at least I had good music taste, I guess. Also, wait, was I implying that I dreamed the entire review? Thankfully, you don't need to know any of that to understand the 1995 Monster Mash, also called Monster Mash the Movie, also called Frankenstein Sings the Movie. Wow, it can't make up its own title, just like Eat Me the Musical, also known as Eat Me a Zombie Musical. Sadly, that's the only similarity these two movies have. Unlike the other Monster Mash, this Monster Mash actually starred the late Bobby Boris Pickett, who performed the original song, and is based on Pickett's stage musical, I'm Sorry the Bridge is Out, You'll Have to Spend the Night. That title rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? So let's see how this holds up to the 2000 film, because... Why not? It's Halloween and I'm stuck inside. Got nothing better to do. I mean, I have this bag of stale candy and this magic cell phone that can communicate with the past, but what the hell am I gonna do with that? This film has been modified from its original version. It has been formatted to fit your television. I'm sorry, are you implying that this movie was ever shown in theaters? <laughs> yeah, okay. Some movies are direct to video, but the quality of this one looks more like it's direct to snuff film. I was working in the lab late one night. Might as well get the title song out of the way early on and wait, this is directed by Joel Cohen? This is a Cohen Brothers film? Well, now I have to change my entire opinion about the movie. I'm just kidding, it's not that Joel Cohen. This Joel Cohen has an H in his name, and his filmography is far less impressive. Cohen and frequent collaborator Alex Sokolow have written such beloved classics as Cheaper by the Dozen, Daddy Day Camp, and the Garfield movies. But their biggest claim to fame was being half the writing crew for Toy Story, and the movie poster proudly boasts that it's by the co-writers of Toy Story. I would question what the other two co-writers went on to do, but pfft. Andrew Stanton, Joss Whedon, who cares about those nobodies? Hey babies, this is the Wolfman coming at ya. We got a ghoulish forecast this Halloween. Ah yes, the Wolfman. He's trying to sound like Wolfman Jack, but he instead sounds like the Wolfman from the other Monster Mash. Our two leads are Scott, played by Ian Bowen, and Mary, played by... Hey, it's Candace Cameron! Don't expect any Full House references, I'd never watched that show. But hey, at least this movie is better than Fuller House. You can't miss that she's played by Candace Cameron, by the way. She's the only build actress on the poster, and in a gigantic font! Scott and Mary are going to a Halloween party, but Scott isn't very interested. Uh, for once, I'd like to go to a party that didn't have plastic pumpkins, fruit punch, and lame music. I mean, just once, I'd like to go to a Halloween party that rocks! Yeah, bad news, you're not gonna find that tonight. Also, no wonder they drove past this dead-end sign when it's on the wrong side of the road and is aimed more towards the audience than towards the drivers. It's dead. What are we gonna do? Look, there's a house with the light on. Psh, wow, that wasn't cliche at all. Didn't I make fun of that in Interstellar 45? Also, that's not the rain, that's just the sprinkler system. Oh hey, the doorbell chime is somewhere over the rainbow, but why? Pretty random, considering that this movie has nothing to do with The Wizard of Oz. The door is answered by Igor, sadly not played by Marty Feldman. Aww. I know, I know. Instead, he's played by John Kassir, who you may remember as the voice of the Crypt Keeper in Tales from the Crypt, but who I best remember as Ralph from Reefer Madness the Musical. And here comes Dr. Frankenstein, played by Bobby Pickett himself. Well, I'm Scott, you can call me Romeo, and uh, this is my girlfriend Mary, uh, Juliet. Romeo. 
and Juliet. Oh, you're Romeo and Juliet? Oh, great. Now I know that this movie will end with you two killing yourselves! In case you haven't been keeping up, this young couple has been stranded with a broken down car and have gone to the house of a mad scientist with a hunchback assistant who plans to use them for his own twisted goals and... Hey, wait a minute! This is just the Rocky Horror Picture Show! No, seriously! It's the exact same plot! Young couple, broken down car, mad scientist, hunchback assistant, they get no help from the scientist and instead wind up getting wrapped up in a completely different plot of wackiness? What the hell? In fact, let's play that earlier scene of them walking, but replace the music. My god! This is shameful! It's a disgrace! It's the same friggin' movie, only this one is rated PG. If I wanted a PG version of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, I'd just... Okay, that's too insulting. This is still better than that crap. Igor acts like a creep, while Dr. Frankenstein tries to call AAA. While Dr. Frankenfurter obviously had no intention of ever helping Brad and Janet, Dr. Frankenstein seems like he's trying to help, but this chick just cuts the telephone cable for no reason. What an asshole! But as you can see, the phone is... dead. Was the dramatic organ sting really necessary? I'm sorry, the bridge is out. You'll have to spend the night. What? I'm sorry, the bridge is out. You'll have to spend the night. No ferry, no other route. No planes, no trains, no flights. Are we really dedicating an entire song to this? Well, I suppose it makes sense when you remember that I'm sorry, the bridge is out, you'll have to spend the night with the play's original title. But still, it seems an odd moment to dedicate an entire song to. I get that this is supposed to be this movie's equivalent to the Time Warp, but this song drags on and is nowhere near as catchy or even fun to look at. The Time Warp is a big production piece. Here, the only choreography appears to be walking, and walking, and more walking. Is this choreography, or is it a reenactment of the second half of Electroma? We do eventually get dancing from these three, and not to complain about hot women dancing and revealing clothing, but who are they? Hell, who are any of these people? I get that we're supposed to assume that these are other main characters, but we haven't been introduced to them yet. I've never written any musicals before, but it's a pretty basic principle of writing that you introduce characters before you give them a song. Wait a minute. Do they say spend the night? Spend the night. 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 You're an idiot. I've got a feeling this is the safest place we could possibly be. True, at least you didn't stumble onto the rave happening just across the street. This is the Wolfman, or Wolfie, played by Adam Shankman, who you may know for his work as a director for films like A Walk to Remember, The Pacifier, Cheaper by the Dozen 2, The 2007 Hairspray, Step Up 3D, and the subject of one of my previous reviews, Rock of Ages. His directing work has been... mixed, to say the least. Also appearing is Wolfie's mom, played by Mink Stoll of Pink Flamingos fame. Doctor, you must help. Sorry, no can do. Pre-existing condition. What pre-existing condition? Your son is a werewolf. <gasps> we prefer caninally challenged. <sighs> okay, that's one time this movie made me laugh. I'm keeping track of it because trust me, these are rare. Now oh, look what you've made me do. Hey, who do you think you are, Taylor Swift? Anthony Cravello plays Count Dracula, if you can't tell by that convincing accent. Perhaps someday I will return to my beloved Transylvania. Transylvania, where the sun never shines and everything is barren. You're from Milwaukee! As it turns out, Dracula has to drink the blood of a virgin. And yeah, looking at these two, it's clear that neither of them have been laid. Gotta love, too, how nobody seems at all phased by meeting all these famous horror movie characters. Good evening. I am Count Dracula. Sorry, I'm talking over all this timeless dialogue. What woman would love a man with a twisted body like mine? Claudia Schiffer? Julia Roberts. Did I mention that this movie was made in 1995? Can you tell? It doesn't matter what a man looks like. It's what's inside that counts. A big bulbous pus-filled calcium deposit counts? 
Okay, that's two times. It's all in your attitude. You can be anything you choose, have anything you want. Anything? Anything. Well, clearly what he wants is another song number. Mary convinces Igor to play his hunch, and despite her clearly just spitballing because she's obviously not interested in him, this fills Igor with confidence, and he partakes in a little dance. There's nothing notable about this song. Whoa! Um, except for that, that line didn't age well. Let's move on. Dr. Frankenstein wants to use Scott's brain for the monster's body. Yeah, I wouldn't advise that. Scott clearly isn't very smart. After all, he agreed to be in this movie. Also, according to this scene, the monster already has a brain. It's just the brain of a stormtrooper. Very clever. Dr. Victor Frankenstein, I presume. Uh, I didn't add that music, by the way. Sissy Strutt was actually used in the film. And I just gotta ask, who the hell thought this horror comedy about Dracula and Frankenstein needed the soundtrack from Jackie Brown? Jimmy Walker of All in the Family fame plays Hathaway, Elvis Presley's manager. Funny, he looks nothing like Colonel Tom Parker. And they'd know, Parker was still alive when this film was released. Okay, the soundtrack choices for this movie are so random. What is even the thought process behind this? Hey, let's use the music from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Why? Because... it exists? Apparently, Elvis Presley has been resurrected and wants to make a comeback, but to fully restore him, they need the blood of a virgin. Again with the virgins? This movie has more of a virgin fixation than Hocus Pocus. Looks like it's about time for a sappy love ballad. On a night like this... Um? Do you know I care? <laughs> oh yeah, I totally buy that. That's his real singing voice. Hey, that doesn't count. Okay, fine. You can count it. On a night like this, I whisper a little prayer. Okay, her singing voice is a little more convincing, but it still sounds off. Side note, my singing voice now sounds like this. And again, have either of you read Romeo and Juliet? You've got to know how it ends, right? Oh, Mary, don't play with the skeleton. I know you want Scott's bone inside you, but touching actual bones isn't going to help. On a night like this. And then Tim Curry molested both of them. Okay, I'm sorry. Perhaps that joke was a little too tasteless for a pure, wholesome family flick like this. I once let my math teacher, Mr. Higgins, French kiss me. I was failing and I needed a grade. Oh, a pedophilia joke. Uh, okay, well, at least they don't make any others, right? I mean, how tasteless would it be if this scene were immediately followed by another joke about... Uh, hey, this is the part where you cut me off and show... When I'm with all those other girls... When I'm with all those other young, sexy, prepubescent, long-legged girls. When I'm with all those other bubbly, bouncy, high cheekbone, fresh veined, perky buttocks. Yeah, right there. Who let this movie get away with this? I mean, I know he's talking about sucking their blood, but the fact that he specifically refers to them as sexy and comments on their long legs and perky buttocks is kinda really frickin' gross. To use an old clip from an old friend that is far too relevant... KIDS MOVIE! K -k KIDS MOVIE! Well, at least the song is over, I guess. Now we can get back to the plot. Woke up this evening, feeling so low. Ah, why did I expect otherwise? Even after this song is over, Dracula and his wife Natasha don't stop their bickering. Big in a blanket? Wimp in a cape. Death breath. <sighs> Pats in the belfry. Uh, I don't complain when your relatives visit. Yeah, I think Mary's reaction sums it up best. Hmm. Not like the rest of the dialogue is any better. I see a bearded man with a hairy back and multiple personalities. You see me dating Robin Williams? <laughs> F*** you, movie! You. How dare you! Look, I know this was before his death, but you have no right to be making jokes about Robin Williams when he is funnier and more talented than anyone in this movie. 
I'm not like other men. I'm I'm a case in point. I will finally take my place among the world's great physicians. Dr. Pasteur, Dr. Salk, Dr. Cosby. Ooh. No, thank you, Igor. I don't want wine tonight. I want a Virgin Mary. Can this movie stop being horny for five minutes? Life to me is like a hamburger. To make it really good, you need hot buns, lots of fixings, and grade A meat. Guess not! What the hell is gonna happen next? I was working in the lab late one night when my eyes beheld an eerie sight. Oh. What? Believe it or not, this is somehow even less connected to this movie than it was to the animated Monster Mash. Perhaps fitting, seeing how Monster Mash was not originally meant to be part of this musical. And this one still doesn't have Dracula's son in it. Dracula and his son. You had two chances to make a Monster Mash movie that actually featured Dracula's son, and you botched both of them! Wonderful. See me after class. Also, I'm pretty sure they're going to reveal Meatloaf's dead body under that table. But it is the most memorable song in this movie, so... Why not? Then you can monster mash and do my graveyard smash. It's the little things that count. Igor is loving it. <laughs> Unfortunately, Scott and Mary pass out from the spiked drinks that Frankenstein gave them earlier and... Wait, why would you drink that? You can see how much those drinks are bubbling, and even if you thought that was just dry ice or something, you know how suspicious Frankenstein is, so you have no excuse. These two ain't the sharpest tools in the shed, if you know what I'm saying. Welp, it's too late for Mary. Looks like Dracula already got to her. Too bad Scott doesn't know before he spills his heart out to Hathaway. Yeah, remember this guy? Hard to keep track with a billion subplots in this movie. The truth is, I'm a virgin. You can tell that's significant because of the echo effect they placed on the word virgin. Frankenstein tries to find Scott to use his brain, but Scott's left in search of Mary. Maybe the boy is searching for the girl. <laughs> Dracula came into the room and put her under a trance. The boy opened his heart up to her and upon entering the room found it to be empty. Maybe just when I think you can't get any more idiotic. You do. What a harebrained plot. Okay, listen, movie. You may be self-aware about the stupidity of your own plot, but you get no points for still using that plot. They start looking for him and... Great Scott! Okay, okay, I promise no more Rocky Horror jokes. Give me that candlestick and I'll explain everything. Why should I? Because I'm giving you my word. And a man has nothing, if not his word. Okay, I trust you. So I have nothing. I can live with that. Good. Then you carry him. I slipped. Wolfie's mom gets her own song now, and I would complain, but it's the last song in the movie, so I'm not too bothered. But Natasha sets Scott free as the movie... I always wanted to do that. Yeah, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Just gives up. Two words. Second word. Sounds like. <laughs> Hope you like this scene because it goes on for two minutes. Is this just what the movie thinks comedy is? Well, Scott and Mary get captured again, and in case you were wondering where the subplot with Elvis was going... Friends? <sighs> hey, what's going on here? Hey, wait a minute! I may be from Hollywood, but I'm not that type of guy! Another rape joke! Why did I expect anything different? Dracula and Natasha are back together too. Got that cleared up. Is any of this dialogue not dated as all hell? The monster will be human! The boy will be the sim. Huh. Little does Frankenstein know, Igor tricked him into putting the helmet on and switched the lever, causing them to switch brains instead. Enough, Igor. A joke's a joke. 
I'm Dr. Victor Frankenstein. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, who's Donald Hump now? This, somehow, causes Mary to break from her trance and she frees Scott. What happened? Why am I dressed in these clothes? Where are we? Honey, you don't want to know. On the contrary, I'm pretty sure she does. That's why she asked. Mary, I love you. I love you too. Or maybe not. Well, Scott and Mary escape, Wolfie's still a werewolf, Dracula and Natasha still hate each other, Elvis is still dead, and it turns out the monster could talk all along. <sighs> I am surrounded by idiots. So in other words, the plot of this movie was entirely pointless. And just forget about the fact that Mary might or might not be a vampire now. That'll be addressed in the sequel that's never made. That was bad. And stupid. And pointless and purposeless. There's no point in the creation of this movie. Nothing was gained from it. Okay, a few jokes are pretty funny, and Bobby Pickett is generally entertaining to watch as Dr. Frankenstein. However, ignoring the shoddy filming and editing, the mostly forgettable songs that each drag on for far too long, and the fact that the plot is all over the place, I think what gets me the most about Monster Mash the movie is how it's bad in an opposite way from the animated Monster Mash. That movie was just a dumb kids flick, probably made for toddlers and with humor that was mostly lowest common denominator. With this movie, a lot of the jokes feel oddly adult and sexual in nature, which gives the movie a confusing tone regarding who it's made for, adults or children. Given that a lot of things were apparently changed from the source material, I kind of wonder if the original play was more adult-oriented, but they toned it down by adding Candace Cameron and removing some of the jokes. But even then, if I wanted a more adult version of this plot, I'd just watch Rocky Horror. Bottom line, I don't recommend this movie. And you know, I never would have had to sit through it if I hadn't watched the other one all those years ago. If only there were some way to fix this. Wait a minute. In this magic cell phone that can communicate with the past? But what the hell am I gonna do with that? My god. I know now what needs to be done. This movie is awful, and I'm glad I'm done with it. This is the hap- Hello? Hello, Spaceman. This is Spaceman. What? I'm you from the future. You know, this is weird, but I believe it. Listen, I don't have a lot of time, so I need you to do something for me. If you'd rather start watching that Monster Mash movie for a review... Don't do it. I repeat, do not do it. There's another one, and watching both of them will only result in pain. Uh, I hate to break it to you, but I just finished watching it. God! Why are you doing this to yourself? To me! To both of us! Look, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was going to be that bad. I mean, I remember it being bad, but not that bad. Couldn't you review something better for Halloween? Like Phantom of the Paradise or Eat Me, a zombie musical? Eat Me, a zombie what? Oh, you'll find out. I can imagine. What's the future like, anyway? We have a fascist president, our nation is being ravaged by a viral pandemic, and High School Musical made a comeback. You're kidding. Pfft, I wish. Well, this has been fun, but I have to finish my review now. Wait, wait, wait. Before you hang up, I have some very important things to tell you. Yeah? What is it? Spit it out, man! One, get used to the couch. Two, invest in Zoom. Three, no matter what you do, always fact check your scripts. Whoa, I'm sorry, uh, you're losing signal and I no longer care. Bye! <sighs> God, I hate past me! So sorry, the bridge is out, no traveling tonight. It's Halloween, you two should just sit tight When morning comes, you can be on your way We're sure you'll survive this unpleasant delay Then again